Hello cousins near and far and welcome to my channel Ancestral Spotlight. Today we're looking into the life of Giles Brent, an English gentleman who gave a significant contribution to the colonies of Maryland and Virginia. He is considered a gateway ancestor of many prestigious genealogical societies as he's directly descended from King Henry II of England, Charlemagne, King Duncan I of Scotland, and many more. So let's have a look. Giles was born circa 1606 at his family's Larkstoke estate in Gloucestershire, England. He was the son of Richard Brent, the Lord of Admington and Larkstoke, and Elizabeth Reed, daughter of the Lord of Tusbury and Witten, Edward Reed. During his minority, his father served as the local sheriff. Giles was the youngest son of 13 children, six girls and seven boys, with the eldest brother to inherit their father's land and titles. His childhood surroundings were bathed in religious conflict and political tensions, dividing the country as well as its governing powers. Giles would have been a young boy when the Native American princess, best known as Pocahontas, came to England. It was a time when tales of the riches of the New World captured the minds of the ambitious, and those of the natives and limitless wild caught the hearts of the adventurous. Although we don't know much about Giles' youth, we do know that he found his way to Jamestown in 1625. He would have been about 20 years old and eager to make his way in the world. Perhaps he tried his luck as a settler or sought employment with the Virginia Company. He very likely interacted early on with the native peoples of the Virginias, tribes of the Powhatan Confederacy, which traded off and on with the English. There were still hostilities between the Confederacy and the English with wars far from over. Whatever his reasons were for going back to England, Giles perhaps saw firsthand the peace that could be and the angers that at times reigned. Back in England, his family developed connections with the Calverts, who famously left their mark in history with the foundation of the colony of Maryland. With limited prospects in England, as well as the strains of the impending English Civil War a mere four years away, he hadn't much to lose and everything to gain, and set his sights on the colonies. Giles came to Maryland in 1638 upon the Elizabeth with his brother Folk and two sisters, Margaret and Mary, though his brother shortly returned to England. They came to port in St. Mary's County, Maryland on November 22, 1638. In the same year, Leonard Calvert, the first proprietary governor of Maryland, who had now married Anne Brent, another of Giles' sisters, seized the trading post of Kent Island, which belonged to William Claiborne, a Virginian who had established the post. He struggled to hold his power and soon went back to England to discuss tactics with his older brother and proprietor of the colony, Cecil Calvert, the second Baron Baltimore. Due to their high standing and affluence, the Brent siblings were able to obtain large grants of land. Giles, with his sisters, proved strong-minded and unyielding in their personal causes, which usually openly opposed the Calverts. Despite their differences, Giles was appointed acting governor of Maryland in April 1643 by Lord Baltimore. He established himself on Kent Island in Maryland and quickly excelled in authoritative positions within the political and governing assemblies and served as the head military officer. Giles married the ward of his sister Margaret, the daughter of the paramount chief of the Piscataway nation, Kitamaquand. Her Christian name was Mary. The young girl was educated and cared for by the Brents. She would prove a valuable asset to the family with navigating the tribal lands and customs. When her father passed away, Giles made claim on her land inheritance. He was unsuccessful though her lands would eventually pass to their son, Giles Jr. The long arm of the English Civil War, which pit the king against the Protestant Parliament, spilled into the colonies. Giles, an enthusiastic royalist, inadvisably antagonized Protestant supporters of Parliament and helped spur an uprising against the Catholic proprietors. On February 14, 1645, St. Mary's City was attacked by Richard Ingle, while William Claiborne reclaimed Kent Island. The settlers' homes and Catholic chapel were burned and plundered. 
Giles' estate in Ken Island was targeted in the chaos. The colony became a battleground, both Catholic settlers and Protestants, each holding makeshift strongholds on either side of the city. The following month, Inkle sailed back to England with his plunder and a handful of prisoners, including Giles, who'd been captured while touring the Dutch vessel The Looking Glass. He was dismissed from office and transported to England in 1645. After obtaining his freedom and making his way back to the colonies, Giles and his wife Mary left Maryland and pushed out into the Virginian wild and built their first plantation called Peace, about 1646, an area later known as Brent's Point along the Potomac River. The plantation was the northernmost residence in Virginia and became the last trading post for northbound settlers. And fitting with Giles' controversial nature, it became the rival post of William Claiborne. The colony was facing a multitude of turmoil, including the untimely death of Leonard Calvert. Leonard made Margaret Brent his sister-in-law, executor of his estate, and encouraged her to do whatever she must to keep things afloat. His dying words to her were noted as take all, spend all. After his death, she promptly liquidated his assets, paid all debts which included payments to the soldiers which had saved the colony. While her actions were credited with saving the colony itself, Leonard's brother, the Lord Baltimore, perhaps unaware of the full desperation of his colony, was furious that his brother's assets were being sold off without his consent. He ordered Margaret and the Brent family to leave Maryland. Giles, being already established in Virginia, was soon joined by his sisters. He left the plantation peace in their good care, and he and his wife built another plantation called Retirement near Aquia Creek, Virginia. Both plantations were located in what would later become Stafford County. Giles became a military officer, and he and his family prospered in Virginia. In 1654, he petitioned the court in Jamestown to stop the English encroachment of the northern neck of Virginia. As a result, land patents were terminated and the lands of the northern neck were preserved. His will was made August 31, 1671 at his plantation retirement in Stafford County, Virginia. He died soon after and was buried in the Brent Family Cemetery in Aquia, Stafford County with his kin.